everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be checking out Transformers Kingdom Deluxe Class Scorponok, a slightly smaller figure when in comparison to the previous War for Cybertron Scorponok, albeit a very, very awesome looking release this time, of course, in his Beast Wars incarnation. To be quite honest though, I haven't been this surprised at the scale of a Deluxe Class ever since we got that Studio Series 2007 jazz, as this figure here is tiny, and we'll get more into that later on in the review, but as far as his actual design is concerned, this is probably the best mainline representation we've ever gotten for this character, much like all of these Beast Wars Kingdom figures, he looks exceptional and really only differs in design to his on-screen counterpart where the beast mode is concerned and the colorization, of which I actually find to be an improvement as the purples certainly do pop when on the shelf. As we bring him in here for a closer look, the head sculpt looks remarkable and is no doubt my favorite part of this figure. It looks really awesome and I love the design traits such as the tusks that Scorponok is in fact sporting on either side. You can see a really nice variety of gold as well as silver there for the mouth plate and you will also notice throughout this review that some parts of Scorponok have been cast out of a very awesome looking purple plastic, which too has got some exceptional skin texture and detail, which you'll mainly see in Scorpion mode, but you can see here for the claws, we've got all of these really awesome looking ridges, and I love that texture that we've got here, which can also be seen on the shoulder pads with the very menacing looking spikes, and even here for the forearms you can see some nice spikes which have got a mix of purple and golden paint. As we swing over here to Scorponok's torso region, it's very broad and bulky, and we also have what appears to be this almost musculature detail with a golden highlight slap bang there in the centre. As we move down to the lower region of Scorponok, when this figure was first announced, I did see some collector's complaint in regards to his proportions, and to be honest, I didn't think there was much of an issue. However, actually having him in hand and comparing him to the likes of Black Arachnia and Cheetor, he is certainly on the smaller side, and I do think these here look slightly squat, especially when compared to how he was in the original 90s series. This may in fact be accurate to how he appeared in Kingdom, but if you were going specifically off Beast Wars animation accuracy, he's definitely a little squatter and a little more broader when in comparison to that original CG model. The legs do essentially just wrap and curl around here, but as they're all on ball joints, you do have a few different ways on how you choose to manipulate them, so if you were so inclined, you could actually take them all and spray them out to give a rather menacing look here from the back, which I actually do not think looks too bad at all. And with these actually moved out of the way, it does allow you to bring the scorpion tail in a little closer to the body and of course over the head to make it look as if though perhaps he's about to sting one of his maximal opponents but just bringing him in here for a closer look you can see some nice texture detail here to the thighs as well as some nice purple and golden highlights for the lower section of the shins and despite the feet actually being asymmetrical in the way they transform they do have a very symmetrical design here for bot mode and you can also see a darker metallic purple used here which I think looks awesome and just bringing that sting in here for a closer look we also do get some really nice looking texture detail, which is honestly where I think some of these Kingdom figures excel. The sculpt work honestly is remarkable for these guys. Articulation for Scorponok is as follows, so he does have a ball joint here at the head, which can look left to right, as well as up and down ever so slightly, and I guess you could also get a slight tilt out of that. We can take these here, rotate these the full 360, they are on pin joints, so can hinge out to the sides. Full rotation here at the bicep, 90 there at the elbow. Full rotation here at the wrists, and the claws can of course open and close. We do get a waist rotation rotation, although it is dependent on how you decide to display the scorpion tail. So if you do have this compressed, it will be restricted, but if you do lift this up, you do pretty much get a full range of motion out of that. The legs can kick forwards that far, back to that far, out to the sides, full rotation at the thigh. Due to transformation, we get a well past 90 degree range of motion on both of the knees, despite it only being on a single pin joint. And then finally, we do get the War for Cybertron ankle rocker pivot, but due to one of them transforming differently to the other for scorpion mode, this one here does have the capability of pivoting forwards and backwards which is pretty decent for some of those display options so overall as far as functionality and display is concerned this guy really does look excellent I love the colors I love the paint I love the sculpt but I do maybe wish that these legs were slightly longer maybe if they could have just extended this thigh region so that he was a little more lankier and was more akin to how he appeared in Beast Wars but this could be completely accurate to how we shall in fact see him for Kingdom as far as accessories are concerned Scorponok has a cyber bee just for you and you can see this looks very accurate when he does actually fire it in order to compromise compromise Optimus Primal and of course can be removed from this claw. It would have been awesome if you could have pulled this section back and it would have been spring loaded and fired out but I guess that's more akin to the old 90s toys than as opposed to Kingdom. You can see we've got some really nice looking details here for the Cyber Bee. I love the reflective tint that we've got here for the wings as well as the very vibrant red and this would be the section that attaches onto Primal's chest plate in order to infect him and if you had any of those Siege Blast effects of course you could peg that in there 
plug it back into the claw to give you the impression that it is indeed firing out of that, which is awesome. And then as we take a look here at the second accessory, we do get that double-headed missile, which too has been sculpted impeccably well, and much like the Cyber B is removable, and both of these are versatile, so you could have the missile on this claw, and of course the Cyber B on the other claw. It's really up to your own personal preference, but definitely super awesome. He has pretty much everything I would want from a Beast War Scorponok. Here for some of the main comparisons, we've got Scorponok compared next to Leader Megatron, Voyager Primal Deluxe Cheetah, and of course Black Arachnia, and it is really between the two Deluxe figures that you can see the stark difference as far as the scale is concerned. He's definitely a good head shorter than Cheetor, which I was not expecting at all. Of course, the Sting does slightly make up for the lack in scale, but I do definitely remember him being a little larger on the show, and as we just bring Black Arachnia here into the equation, you can see here that once again, he is a lot smaller when compared to her, but I actually do think the scale between him and Megatron works okay, so I guess it's really an issue with Cheetor and Black Arachnia perhaps being too big, or maybe they should just scale Megatron up and then of course subsequently scale the rest of the lineup, but the scale could of course be accurate to how he will appear in Kingdom. So, turning to Scorponok's transformation into beast mode, to be honest, it's actually quite simplistic, although there are some really neat tricks, which actually result in a rather asymmetrical looking conversion, despite him being very symmetrical in both robot mode and scorpion mode, so let's get straight into it you are going to want to collapse the claws in if you haven't done so already completely reverse all of the scorpion legs outwards so that they are in fact sprayed out we can then take the shoulders and click these up just like this and then you'll want to come here to the chest unit and just pry the chest piece apart and i was really surprised to see them actually sculpt what appears to be the almost power core or i guess you could call it the all spark of scorpionok in here that's a really nice attention to detail we can then take scorpionok's robot mode head and just compress that in there and then you'll want to take this entire lower section and this will in fact disengage just like so via these two tabs and these two slots so once that's detached you'll then want to spin here at the waist and you'll know you've done this right when this gray section of the hill spur is in fact pointing towards where the tail is and the purple one is pointing downwards you will then want to rotate here at the hip and then rotate here at the thigh and just compress that in bring this entire section back and then we can take the scorpion head, fold this out, and then just compress this down like so. You'll then want to take the scorpion legs, and these will soft click into place, and repeat the same process. Of course, come here to this side, bring the scorpion tail down, and this tiny little mushroom peg groove that we have will in fact be housed via this tab here. So just align this up appropriately, and push that into place. And once that's complete, you should be able to shoot this tiny spike through this hole so that it comes out of the other side, bring this forwards, and then just collapse the front of the foot alongside to create a very clean look, which I thought was really awesome. Then spin here at the thigh for the opposite leg. You can see a tiny slot here on the heel spur that will peg into this tab. And then it is just a matter of compressing this along this back, just like so to create a rather clean look from a side profile. Bring all of these legs out and around. And of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. And then it's more or less just a matter of aligning these claws up appropriately. And there we have Kingdom Scorponok fully transformed up in his very awesome, rather freaky looking Scorpion Beast Mode. Definitely rather impressive, especially where the engineering is concerned. He goes from a very stocky, rather short robot to a very streamlined and quite large looking beast form, and I think it has paid off exceptionally well. Much like all of these beast characters, they have decided to go for a slightly more realistic vibe, which I actually think works against Scorponok, as I do find his original Beast Wars head sculpt to be vastly superior, as it just has so much more personality, albeit this one here is very intimidating. I do not think that it is nowhere near as iconic as what we actually got on the show, and I am hoping that Hasbro do re-release this figure down the line with a much more Toon-inspired head, but nevertheless, you can see some really nice looking sculpt work, as well as some very vibrant red pincers, as well as red eyes. We've once again got those huge claws that we saw in bot mode, so I shan't go into too much detail in regards to them. I think the texture and sculpt work here for the legs too have also come out really well, and that entire abdomen section, as well as the stinger tail, just looks fantastic, especially from a front perspective. You can see it's been cast out what appears to be an almost greyish purple. I'm not entirely sure how well that's coming across on camera, but it definitely does look like a very, very light shade of purple, borderline grey. But I think it works rather well. Of course, we've got the tip from the hill spur here and the very nice red pointy sting there at the top, which has been sculpted really, really nicely. And then as we flip here to the underside, I do think he compacts rather well. It's fascinating to me that despite him having a very symmetrical bot mode, it's a very asymmetrical design here for scorpion mode, especially where the legs end up. I find that fascinating and it's really just a prime example of how far 
far Hasbro and Takara have come as far as engineering is concerned. In regards to articulation, Scorponok does have a tail, which is actually quite well articulated. So this can be hinged all the way forwards, although you will have to move the chest piece out of the way in order to just allow this leg to come forwards. So we can bring this here all the way forwards like so to make him look as if though he's about to sting one of his maximal opponents. We get a hinge joint here at the top, as well as a ball joint here at the main sting itself. All of the legs are individually articulated on ball joints, so you can manipulate these around to your so personal desire. And of course, we've got all of the same range of motion that we've got in bot mode here for the arms, and the head is merely just a static piece. But definitely a rather awesome looking Scorpion mode. I just wish that he did have a slightly more tune accurate looking head here for beast form. And I honestly think there is no doubt that this guy is going to be retooled into trench. I think this would be the perfect base to actually start off and I think that this would suit the character so much more than what some are predicting with them using Black Arachne as a base. This guy is definitely a lot bigger and a lot bulkier here in Scorpion and in bot mode in some regards. So I do think that Tarantulas is definitely going to be based on this figure. But here from a bird's eye perspective, you can just see how well done this guy looks. Definitely from a front on perspective though, he looks incredible and you can open these up to reveal the cyber bee and of course that double headed missile and wrapping up for a comparison we have some of those kingdom beast wars predacons that we've gotten so far here's hoping that waspinator is definitely coming in that wave four but really i do think they work quite well with one another it is quite surprising to me to just see how much larger he becomes in beast form especially considering how small he was compared to these two guys in bot mode the engineering that they've packed into this guy certainly is very surprising and i think these three look fantastic so here's hoping that they do in fact give us pterosaur i know Spinator is supposed to be up and coming and of course I would love to get a Tarantulas even if it is just a heavy retool here of Scorponok. So that was my review for Transformers Kingdom Deluxe Class Scorponok. Overall it's once again another home run for Hasbro. They appear to be knocking it out of the park especially where some of these Beast Wars characters are concerned and I think Scorponok here is no exception. His bot mode is near enough perfect to how he appeared in the original 90s series albeit some discrepancies in regards to scale but that could in fact be accurate to how he shall appear in the third and final chapter of the War for Cybertron trilogy schedule to hit Netflix I believe next month. He packs in some great articulation, really nice paint apps as well as overall plastic colorization. I think the incorporation of the Cyber B as well as the double headed missile are great accessories and that conversion honestly is just so so awesome. It's very simplistic but it results in a super super awesome looking Scorpion mode which is much larger and much more streamlined when in comparison to his bot mode. I maybe would have liked to have seen a slightly more tune accurate head sculpt for him in beast form but that is just a running trend with these kingdom figures. They have so far decided to go for slightly more realistic in interpretations of the characters so I can't really fault them too much on that and I think the colors as well as the articulation too is really really impressive so overall if you are a Kingdom fan a Beast Wars fan or just a Wolf of Cybertron trilogy fan in general Scorponok here is a must-have it's an original mold which I'm sure will no doubt be retooled into Tarantulas and it's awesome to finally get some more Predacons that actually appeared in Beast Wars introduced into this Kingdom line and so far they've been very scarce with the Maximals actually taking over I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this figure shall you be adding him to your collection and like me, are you hoping that he is in fact retooled into that rumoured Tarantulas? Or do you wish that Tarantulas was in fact an all brand new mold? I thank you all for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.